Somebody said miracles. Miracles. And I, I could literally, amen, go on of miracles that are in the Bible. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Sometimes you just need to reach out there and get them. But just to make my point, miracles are available to those of us that will believe for them. I believe that miracles are attributed and available to us. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do. Jesus performed 76 notable miracles that were written in the book. Even though John said that it was not possible to write everything that he said and did. That all of the books in the world could not contain the things that he did. Oh, wouldn't it have been cool if it would have been on the internet? If Jesus could have been live streamed, amen, if somebody could have been recording it, and we could have literally heard everything that He said and everything that He did, my goodness, we would truly have an even greater revelation of what God did. But the one thing that we need to understand that Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. When Jesus went to heaven, I talked about it on Tuesday night, the, 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 the transaction from Jesus leaving the earth Ascending into heaven, there was some type of transaction. What heaven put on earth because Jesus went to heaven. Amen. That, that exchange of the Spirit into this realm that we live in. Jesus rose and was the first, the first fruit of many sons. And then we can all become the sons of God. Amen. Amen. The place, the space where miracles happen. Amen. I read it to you. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the, the violence. What's that mean? It, it's, it's the persistent. It's the, 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 the pressing. It's the, the something that gets inside of you that says, I will not take no for an answer. I will not be stopped. I will not be deterred. I will not allow a shut door to stop me from knocking on a door. I will not allow, amen, disappointment to discourage me. Amen. It is something that happens to someone that says, I am going to do the work of God. Amen. 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 Miracles happen at the place where we find ourselves faced with a choice to act or to draw back. When the Lord is prompting us to make a step and we make it, this is the divine space where we see the miraculous working of God's power. Amen. It was yesterday morning I awoke and my mind was spinning. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning and I got up and usually, amen, after just a little bit of prayer, I can get up and, amen, find what God is trying to say to me and I'll write it and I'll pray it. But I, I couldn't I couldn't get traction on anything. I mean, I think it's four o'clock in the morning. I don't want to I don't want to do this for nothing. So I prayed a little more, and I mean, I just it just wasn't really clicking for me. So I said, Well, I'm gonna go back to bed. And then about the time I went back to bed, I, I began to, to think about something that I've seen in this church. Amen. And two people that have two people that I remember and was there and I saw it when they received the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was Sister Dorothy. Amen. You know, she's timid. She's not here this morning. She got a new job, but she's timid, and usually she doesn't come up very close. But I remember the morning that she got the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. She was white right up front. And I remember, amen, I, I saw it. No one was praying with her. Uh, no one was laying hands on her. Everybody was just praying. And, and I just, almost like I saw it, just kind of just gently land on her. And I looked and I, and I saw she had received the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking in tongues. She had talked to me early in the week and she told me, she said, she said, Pastor Phillips, I dreamed that I received the Holy Ghost because in my dream I was speaking in tongues. I said, well, that's just God telling you what He's going to do for you just in a few days. Amen. Hallelujah. It happened because something drew her, something pulled on her and she went further than she would normally have went. And it's in that place where we respond to the drawing, the calling of God, where miracles happen in our lives. Amen. I saw it, Brother Oma, the night that he received the Holy Ghost. He came on Tuesday night. It may have been, it was his first Tuesday night ever to come. And, uh, uh, you know, his dad had been telling him that he needed to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and his dad, I guess for a long time, he'd been encouraging him, you need, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that night, amen, we had a tremendous touch of God and, Amen. He's kind of 
chilling a little bit, and he and, and, and he he was up front praying, and and he was responding in a way that was a little beyond his normal way. But I remember, I mean, kind of the same kind of thing. I just kind of saw the Holy Ghost just kind of settle down on him, and he began to speak in a language that he never learned. Where does it happen? It happens in that space just beyond our comfort zone, just beyond what we would normally do. And that is the space where miracles happen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Miracles happen just a few steps beyond where we would naturally go. There is that space that is filled with faith. Like seeing the stepping stones through the water that flows over them in a stream. Seeing beyond the surface to see the rock that will support you while you step out in faith. We often must be able to see beyond the surface to make the step that is that place where God is prompting us to go. I want you to think about this thing. The things of God are not naturally discerned. No man knoweth the things of man but by the, but by the Spirit of man. And no man knoweth the things of God but by the Spirit of God. Even when it seems you have all the tools to get the job done, there are times we know there's something missing. In a moment of time, things change. We travel from night to morning, and the turning of the numbers on the clock from a.m. to p.m., the dropping of a ball, and the crowd's cheer as a moment transfers us from one year, one decade, and recently one millennium. Jesus walked the roads of Judea. Israel did not know Messiah had come because of the lack, the lack of pomp and circumstance. They could not see the meaning in the miracles. No amount of seeing brings faith. I, I, I want to really impress this. Just because you see it don't mean you believe it. If that's true. All of Israel would have went into the promised land because they saw it. Right. Seeing is not believing. Right. Brother Jason Dillon called me yesterday on the radio program and he talked about a young lady that had fallen and, and twisted her ankle somehow. And he reached down to help her get up and she got back up and she fell back down again. And she was in tremendous pain and he was going to go to the nurse's station. And he said he felt prompted just to pray for her. And if you know Brother Jason, you'll understand what he got to tell you. He said, oh, I just, God, forgive me for not praying. For, I mean, he just went all on and on about how he felt bad about how he didn't pray first. Well, we're all like that, right? And he said he felt prompted. And he said, he said, let's just pray. And they just all prayed for just a moment. He said, you know, we didn't pray loud. We didn't speak in tongues. We just said, Lord, touch her. And she, he said, you know, I just want you to see if you can move your foot. And she began to move her foot. And, amen. On her own accord, she began to make steps. And she said, he said that, that, that she began to say, I'm not believing this. And he said that at that point, when everyone realized that God had healed her, there was this glory that manifested. There was the presence of the Lord. He said, I felt like I was about to be raptured. And then there is something powerful that happens inside of us and around us when we really connect to see that God has done what we've asked Him to do. It is in that space, in that place where faith is, where we are called to step into. Amen. You cannot judge things by how they look. You cannot judge things by how they look. You cannot judge people by who they are. You cannot know the power of God. Who would have ever discerned or imagined that Apostle Paul would have become the greatest evangelist, the greatest apostle, the greatest writer? 